IHGN Studios, it's Braves Beat. Hello Braves and welcome back to this week's episode of Braves Beat. I'm Charlie Rogers. And I'm John Anning. You got any fun plans this weekend? Uh, yeah, probably going to go to stadium with some of my friends and I might head over to TC's after. Sounds fun, sounds fun. Well, we have a lot of news to cover so let's get started. Music Fest is coming up in just a few short weeks. This festival is meant to be a celebration of student achievement and a day to relax at the end of an AP season. They are still looking for acts, so if you're musically inclined and interested, please fill out this form on your class canvas page. All submissions are due by April 29th. Runners, walkers, and stroller pushers are invited to the 13th annual Conquer the Hill on Saturday, April 27th. The 5K starts at 8.30 a.m. with a kids fun run following at 9.30 a.m. Click the link in the description for more details. Hello Braves, uh, as we all know, April is Autism Awareness Month. We've been pushing that message for the last three weeks with every story, uh, but apparently uh, some stuff has come to our attention about a certain company, Autism Speaks. So we have an ambassador here at Mayday who's going to talk to us a little bit why that's happening. So what's going on with Autism Speaks? Autism Speaks for the past, I think they started in 2005, but from that whole time they've been saying negative things about autism. They have been, um, almost demonizing autism, trying to cure it when it's something that doesn't need to be cured and can't be cured. They've been put, they've, they're called Autism Speaks, but they haven't been letting autistic people speak and they've only been letting the parents speak and in ways that can be very hurtful and ways that aren't correct. And they're just saying the worst things you can think of, but recently they've been trying to hide the things they've been saying, and they have been doing a good job of that as people, enough people don't know behind the scenes of what Autism Speaks has been saying. In 2009, they made a video called I Am Autism that says some of the worst things I could possibly imagine someone saying about autism. And they have, they have taken that video down, and it's not an ad campaign anymore, but they have not apologized for that, and I don't think they will apologize for that, as they continue like underground saying things that should not be said. So what can we as a community do to help combat this? I think the first thing, the, the most important thing is understanding and learning yourself about what you're supporting, who you're supporting, what the people are doing, and you can't just go off the very first Google search, you have to look deeper especially with things like Autism Speaks, they hide it very well and you have to look into that. You, Autism Speaks has been one of those things that no autistic person has liked and even non-autistic people have stated that they do not like it. But not enough people don't, not enough people know what's been going on. So this is a call to all of us to make sure we do our research before we dive into a charity company, or charity company. And the current logo for them is a puzzle piece, and that's the mostly the known symbol for autism is a puzzle piece. But that has been used in the past as ableist and isn't correct anymore, as it's stating that autistic people are missing something and we're not put together. And not only that, but it's also sort of childish when children are not the only people who have autism, and it's in adults as well. And now the new symbol for it that should hopefully be starting to kick up and be known more is an infinity symbol with the rainbow. And that not only represents autistic children, but also autistic adults, as the puzzle piece has been more targeted and thought of by children. All right, well, thanks for coming down. Braves disregard everything we've said about Autism Speaks. Do not go there. Back to you at the desk. Here's Mr. Johnson with this week's two words. What's up, Braves? Here are your two words for the week. Keep going. One of the defining qualities of the best student leaders is their ability to be honest about the progress that they're making towards their goals. Now, let's be real. Sometimes we find ourselves moving very, very slow towards accomplishing the goals that we have. And then we find ourselves frustrated and possibly wanting to give up. Today, I wanna to remind you of the importance of keeping your goals at the forefront of your mind. Do you have a goal for yourself that you want to accomplish by the end of the school year? If so, it's not too late to reach that goal. The key is you have to have a plan, 
a blueprint, and some type of ideas for how you're going to use the rest of this school year to make it happen. I know that thinking about the future and how you're going to accomplish something that might seem far off can be overwhelming for some. But remember, a step towards your goal is progress. Let's commit to thinking about what's important to us and how we can use this last chunk of the school year to be the best that we can be and keep growing. If you make a commitment to keep going, I guarantee you will have nothing to lose and you'll be in a better space tomorrow than you were yesterday. Go Braves. Thanks for those words of wisdom, Mr. Johnson. The Indian Hill production of The Adams Family is happening this weekend. Performance dates are April 19th and Saturday, April 20th at 7 p.m. You won't want to miss this fun show. Here's John and Eli with this week's sports news. Thanks, guys. Hello, Braves, and welcome to this week's sports report. I'm Eli Riggs. And I'm John Pilegel, starting off with our outstanding baseball team. They took on Madeira and cruised to an easy 9-0 shutout on Monday. They also defeated the Cincinnati Trailblazers on Tuesday, 19-14. I can't wait to see where that team goes this year. In softball, the girls picked up two wins versus Madeira and Deer Park this week. The record now stands at 5-1. and one. Our track and field team competed this weekend at the Country Day Invitational, with the girls placing sixth overall and the boys claiming the top step of the podium with a first-place finish. In lacrosse news, the boys defeated the Mustangs 15-9 on Monday. They also played Kings in Wyoming on Wednesday and Thursday, but we don't have those scores yet. Girls lacrosse keeps on rolling as they beat Milford 14-9, putting them at 7-1 on the year. Way to go, ladies. Well, Braves, that's all the sports news we have this, for this week. Let's send it back to John and Charlie at the news desk. Thanks for the scores, guys. Just a reminder that we still have one more week of EOC testing left for the school year. We will be following the same schedule from the past two weeks. Good luck with all the exams. All right, Braves, that's all the news we have for this week. Be sure to follow us on X and Instagram, subscribe to us on YouTube, and email us with any school updates. And remember, stay, stay classy, classy Indian, Indian Hill. Hill. Which one am I going for? Just any of them. Yeah. Can you go? Yeah. He said yes! I would love to go to prom with you. Yes. I think my wife would like that very much. Are you going to prom with me? Yeah. Yeah. Michael, will you go to prom with me? Yeah. <laughs> prom with me? Yeah. Is that a yes? Yes. It's fine. It's fine. Lit. That's yeah. that. That was Ryan, bro. <laughs> He's scared of girls. Please go to prom with me. Prom? Prom?